Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata, and I hope you're having an amazing day. As I mentioned before, Paul is away at the moment, so it's down to yours truly to give you the latest updates from the tech world, and we have some things to discuss from AMD today, as well as from Intel. But we are going to start things off with AMD, as we have updates to Zen 4 3D Vcash, and their APUs and a few other bits as well. But first, just a few words from this video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, obviously, we've had quite a bit of rumors, leaks, and so on regarding Ryzen 7000 3D. We've, of course, had previous reports that state that we will see it being unveiled at CES 2023. And, of course, we've discussed it numerous times on the channel as well. But we have a new leak today thanks to Enthusiast Citizen at Billy Billy. And if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, that name should be very familiar to you. And they've reported a few different things. Uh, AMD has three major products that are planned for 2023, one of which, of course, is... Zen 4 3D. Let's begin with the APUs, shall we, as a bit of a teaser as we run up to the Vcash stuff, although of course there are timestamps in the description. So, we also are going to be having, of course, some AM5 desktop APUs planned, at least according to Enthusiast Citizen. They are going to be coming under the Ryzen 7000G series family and will be launching in the second half of 2023. Now, unfortunately, any further details are pretty damn thin on the ground. That's pretty much all the concrete stuff that Enthusiast Citizen had to share. But it would make sense for obviously to be a Zen 4 plus RDNA 3 APU, given that, of course, again, according to these reports, that is coming out in the second half of 2023. But let's move on now to the juiciest fruit here, and that is obviously a Zen 4 3D. Now, obviously, it has been previously reported by WCCF Tech, as I previously mentioned, that it's going to be unveiled at CES 2023. But today, the leaks state that apparently we're going to be seeing only two parts be part of the Ryzen 7000 3D lineup, an 8-core and a 6-core variant. So what is a reasonable expectation for this is that we're going to be getting Ryzen 7 7800X3D and Ryzen 5 7600X3D. Obviously it might not have that exact nomenclature, but that's roughly a, a reasonable guesstimate, educated guess, I suppose you could say, as to what we can expect from Zen 4 3D. Obviously we can expect that, you know, 3D stat chiplet design, and all of that lovely stuff that AMD detailed at their Computex event. But I think it's safe to say that a lot of people are really interested to see what the 3D stacking can bring to Zen 4 as 5800X 3D, which of course was a Zen 3 part, was pretty damn interesting and has become a pretty damn popular chip due to its fantastic performance and good value price versus performance as well. So can lightning strike twice with Zen 4 3D? That is the question. And thankfully, it's not too long until we have to um, until we find out. Excuse me. Of course, CES does take place in January. So the final thing that Enthusiast Citizen had to reveal was just regarding AM5 as an update on the A620 chipset platform. Now, AMD so far have only really confirmed X670, X excuse me, and B650, but Enthusiast Citizen is stating that we will be seeing the A620 chipset announced around Q2 of 2022 and will not offer any overclocking support for the processors. So obviously this makes sense as it's an entry level platform and could obviously be a motherboard of choice for those looking for a non-X chip or a low end Ryzen 3 chip if you do indeed end up seeing them added to the Zen 4 ecosystem. 
So as I mentioned at the start of this video, we do have some things from Intel, the first of which is a report which gives us a look-see at their market share versus AMD, and this is the Mercury Research Report, which was helpfully shared by the guys over at ComputerBase.de, and of course, you can find their article linked below. Now, I don't need to tell you that, well, the last few years have not exactly been great for Intel's market share. They've been losing market share to AMD CPUs for the past couple of years, but it seems they are clawing it back some. According to the Mercury Research Report, which again you can find linked below, AMD lost overall x86 market share, which was driven by losses in both desktop and notebook. However, the server side of things was looking a little better for AMD. But let's go into the nitty gritty a little bit, shall we? Again, according to this report, AMD's market share on desktop fell by 6.6% on a quarter by quarter basis and 3.1 percentage points on a year by year basis to 13.9 percent which is pretty significant and the notebook side also saw a pretty oof market share loss with AMD going from 24.8 percent to 15.7 in just a single quarter just ouch but combined, these losses meant that an overall x86 market share AMD fell 2.9% from 31 to 285 and 39 on a year-by-year -year basis, the previous being quarter-by-quarter. Quarter. Again, the server side did look a little more healthy. They took a 3.6 percentage point share from Intel quarter over quarter and a 7.3 7 excuse me percentage point increase year over year. So server side, they have 17% of the entire x86 server market. So the TLDR is that Intel have finally managed to claw back some of the ground that they lost versus AMD over the last few years. However, in servers, AMD have managed to get more ground, but it's definitely going to be interesting because as we've both said, both Paul and myself a billion times, that no one wants to curb stomp either way. It's more interesting for the consumers, it's better for the consumers and the market if there's some competition because, you know, we don't want a situation where one side or the other gets lazy because why do they have to try? They just they just keep winning every time. But if they have to actually keep being competitive and blah blah blah, we get better products in the end. So it's definitely going to be one to see as of course we approach Zen 4 3D and Zen 5. But to finish things up, we have some Intel rumours once again from Enthusiast Citizen over at Billy Billy and they have discussed three upcoming desktop CPU families including Raptor Lake, Refresh and Meteor Lake and of course Arrow Lake. So let's get stuck right in shall we? According to Enthusiast Citizen we will be seeing a Raptor Lake be the queen of the ball for the majority of 2023 at least in Camp Intel. They are planning to launch that Raptor Lake refresh that I just mentioned around the second half of 2023 roughly around Q3 apparently and we are also going to be seeing a 3900KS launch early next year but apparently that is not part of the Raptor Lake refresh but he also has some details to share on Meteor Lake itself, we're going to be seeing a slight reduction in the number of P cores while retaining the same number of E cores, and we do see a leaked lineup list. And you can see the full configuration for yourself on screen. I'm not going to go through them because you're perfectly capable of reading through that yourself. However, in addition to this, they did also share that all of the SKUs will have at least four XE cores for the iGPU and are going to have 64 execution units or 512 ALUs. Interestingly, however, apparently we are only going to be seeing Meteor Lake go up to i7 and there's not going to be any i9 parts due to that reduced core count. But when it comes to Arrow Lake, we will be seeing 24 cores make a comeback and we're going to be seeing, again, 24 cores, 8 performance cores and 16 efficiency cores and we're going to be seeing only i7 and i9 flavors and once again there is a few SKUs on screen once again courtesy of Enthusiast Citizen and of course you can find anything I've used as a source linked in the description below this video. So very very interesting times, exciting times. As I said Paul is officially flying back today but you know obviously he's going to be knackered. So normal service will resume in a couple of days and he has a ton of interesting stuff to discuss so do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you don't want to miss the latest. Anyway that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.